Welcome to my channel. This is another episode of Daily News Clips. And today I'm letting you off easy. I'm not even going to bring up anything on the screen. I'm just going to talk about them. So this will be quick. But before I do that, I want to thank you for coming to my channel from all over the world and coming back time and time again to see my videos, for supporting my channel, and for supporting me. I really, really do thank you. The viewers that I have, I think, in my personal opinion, are some of the highest quality people in the world. And I really do appreciate you. So, today's news items, just a handful and uh, pretty simple, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> pretty simple. I'm just going to put the links in the description for you to check them out if you want to. Uh, the first article is entitled, We Broke the Censorship Fever in Brazil. And it's a story about a reporter who was in Brazil and was reporting on the censorship. We've talked about this in previous daily news clips where um, Elon Musk has refused to bend the knee to Brazilian censorship. And so... There's a, a huge battle going on now where the government wants to suppress, surprise, surprise, election misinformation. In other words, things that don't agree with the ruling party. And uh, things were looking pretty bad, but uh, something happened. This reporter was interviewed by some Brazilian newspapers and they misrepresented when they printed their stories what he had said and they um, they basically said that suppressing election disinformation and misinformation is a good thing and so it irritated him enough that he tweeted about it and his tweet went viral and he was getting uh, positive comments from Brazilians all over. They were very pleased with what he said. Some of them talked about how they're afraid to speak up because of the censorship that's going on. So I don't know, you know, the, I think that the title of his article might be a little bit too optimistic. We'll have to wait and see. But perhaps the tide has turned and perhaps Brazil will abandon their attempts to suppress all opposition voices. We'll see. The second article I have is written by Peter Sweden and he actually went to Germany and met German farmers who are protesting climate the climate agenda. The, the problem is that they're raising fuel prices to the point where it's becoming impossible to make a profit as a farmer. And so farmers all over Europe are protesting and he went to Germany to talk to them and find out what they think. And he wrote an article about it. And also, there's also a video embedded in the article. So you can watch that if you want to. The next article I have is a second uh, installment of Ben Meets America. I shared the first one with you where he went to New Orleans. And he found out that Americans on the ground, where you talk to them individually, are not nearly as divided on the issues as what the media, the mainstream media, and the politicians would like you to think. So this issue, he attended a rodeo in Arlington, and he talks about what he learned at that rodeo. And again, there's an embedded video in that as well. And again, I'll put all these links in the description so you'll have them. And then the last article I have is Q&A Dissecting Paxlovid, Paxlovid's Life-Saving Claims. Now, if you're not familiar with Paxlovid, I, I don't, you know, I don't see any kind of um, non-American television or media very much. And so I don't really know what's going on, for example, in Europe or Asia with regard to COVID type stuff. But in the United States, they have this tremendous advertising campaign on TV. If it's COVID, it's Paxlovid. That's the catchphrase. 
And what it is, is Pfizer is trying to convince people to use Paxlovid to save their life if they get COVID. And the reality is that the tests that have been done, the, the research projects that have been done, have not shown that it has any positive effect at all. And yet, Pfizer managed to extract $18 billion from the United States government so that the government could hand out Paxlovid for free to people who wanted it. The problem they're having is people don't want it. Isn't that interesting? Uh, you know, it's really disturbing to me the way that it, things have gone in the field of science. Science is supposed to be an impartial discipline. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Science is supposed to be an impartial discipline where they look at the facts and they do research and they determine what the truth is. But science has been perverted during the, the COVID pandemic to serve the pur purposes of the state. And we're finally starting to see some scientists push back and say, wait a minute, this is not right. This particular article is Matt Taibbi talking to a man who was a journalist and became a doctor. And so he has a unique perspective on what's going on. And he can see behind the advertising claims to what's really going on because he's read the research articles. And he talks about how Paxlovid has not been proven to have any effect at all on saving people's lives when they have COVID. And of course, you know, we already know that ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine uh, combined with zinc will kill the virus. But those are over-the-counter drugs. Those are cheap drugs. And the drug industry wants to keep making their fortunes off of these special drugs that they develop. They sold Paxlovid for, to the United States government for $539 a dose. And now that the United States government is no longer buying them, they're selling them for $13.95 for a dose. It's a, it's a five-day regimen, just like azithromycin. If you're familiar with that, it's an antibacterial that you can buy. It comes in what they call Z-Packs. It's a five-day treatment schedule. And it costs 10 bucks. 10 bucks. Paxlovid costs $13.95. <sighs> I yearn for the day when we'll have honesty in government, when we'll have frankness, and when we'll have factual information. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but I yearn for it anyway. That's the news for the day. And as you are sure, I sure, I'm sure you know, I pray for you every day. I pray that you will live an abundant life, that you'll be healthy and that you'll live a long time, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I also pray that he'll do the same for every single person that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God, and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.